We are Myth Vision. Welcome back to Myth Vision Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing I want you to do, go down in the description, check out the upcoming webinar on the Nativity of Jesus Christ. Is it fact? Is it myth? Is it legend? Did it really happen? What's going on? All of this will be covered. There's going to be an all-day webinar with Dr. Bart D. Ehrman. And ladies and gentlemen, the myth, the legend himself is here joining me today. How are you doing? Doing well, thanks. Yeah, doing well. Looking forward to this webinar. It's going to be an all-day affair. Four lectures with Q&A after each one, uh, all day December 5th, on, on what did the Christmas story really happen? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's really going to be really interesting. I'll be honest, as a kid, I really enjoyed Santa coming more than I did the Jesus birth. But either way, I mean, not being funny, I'm dead serious. Like, yeah. wasn't that serious of a re religious household growing up? But Dr. Ehrman, I I'm going to do a little spin here because I think it's related to the topic. But I don't want to give away too many goodies. I want everybody to go and join us at the webinar to get their Christmas present from Santa Claus. And uh, there you go. So I want to talk about three to five of your favorite contradictions. They're all subjective. This is your decision. And we'll just start with one and work from there. I'd like to pick three to five major contradictions in the New Testament that you really enjoy. Okay. I'll tell you, uh, for, first one I'll tell you is the one that made me realize that, um, that the Bible's not inerrant. Uh, if people have read my stuff, they might've heard this one. But in, in, uh, in Mark chapter two, the uh, so let me just say, you know, I, I was a fundamentalist. I thought there was no mistakes in the Bible of any kind, any kind, no contradictions. I could explain anything. And so like, you know, like fundamentalists today still can. And so in Mark chapter two, Jesus disciples are going through the um, are going through the uh, fields of grain. It's a Sabbath. They're hungry. They peel off some grain. They start eating it. And the Pharisees see them doing it. I guess Pharisees are in every corner in Galilee watching to see if people are eating grain on the Sabbath. <laughs> They're doing it. And this, the Pharisees get really upset. And they say, Jesus, your disciples are harvesting grain on the Sabbath. You can't do that. And uh, tell them to stop. And Jesus says, look, don't you remember what King David did when Abiathar was the high priest? He went into the temple and ate the showbread with his people, with his men, because they were hungry, even though only the priests are supposed to eat it. Sabbath was made for humans, not humans for the Sabbath. And so, so you have this story. So I had this class at uh, Princeton Seminary, uh, a Greek interpretation of, of Mark. My first semester is like, we studied Mark in Greek. The, and, and at the end, we had to write a term paper. I wrote a term paper on this passage because this passage says that this took place in the Old Testament when Abiathar was the high priest. But the Old Testament says that it took place when Ahimelech was the high priest, Abiathar's father. So I wrote a 30 page paper arguing that in fact, even though it says that Abiathar was the high priest, it means that Ahimelech was the high priest. <laughs> it's a very complicated argument, you know, and with the grammar of, of the Greek and style, I already saw 30 pages later, boom, it really was Ahimelech and Jesus knew it. So at the end, my, my teacher was very pious, very pious and very devout Christian, but he wasn't a fundamentalist, but he was a very devout Christian. And he liked my paper, gave me an A on the paper, but then at the bottom he said, you know, maybe Mark just made a mistake. <laughs> I thought, huh, <laughs> that would be easier than a 30-page paper that's dancing around the problem. Yeah, okay. So once I realized that, it opened the floodgate. After that, I started finding all sorts of contradictions. And the thing is that sometimes they're big and sometimes they're little. But if somebody's a fundamentalist, the big ones don't bother you because you can explain those away. You, those are easy. It's the little ones that you think, oh, God, how do you do that? For example, here's another favorite one of mine. Um, in the Gospel of Mark, uh, I think it's chapter five. There's a uh, there's a a man who's a leader of a synagogue, um, whose uh, whose daughter has uh, has gotten sick, and he comes up to Jesus and he says to Jesus, um, uh, "My daughter's sick, and uh, could you come heal her because you know she's going to die?" And and Jesus says, "Okay." So Jesus starts going to. To his house and before he can get there he gets interrupted another thing happens somebody bothers and he he has to deal with this other thing and and by this time um the uh the man's daughter's died so he gets there and it's too late she's dead ah i'm too late the, jesus says, don't worry about it i'll uh, i'll i'll heal her and so he goes into the room she's dead she's up and he raises her from the dead that's mark's gospel matthew's gospel says 
that what happened is, this guy's name was Jairus, by the way. His name is Jairus. So this is the story of Jairus' daughter, J-A-I-R-U-S. And so in, in Matthew, it says, this man Jairus comes up to Jesus and he says, my, uh, my daughter has just died. Can you do anything about it? In Mark's gospel, she wasn't dead yet. The whole point is she wasn't dead yet. But right. in Matthew, she comes up, my daughter died. Can you do? So Jesus goes and he raises her from the dead. Okay, but it's like, which was it? You know, it couldn't be both. So I, when I was a graduate student, I, I started starting to leave my inerrant, my view of the inerrancy of the Bible, that it was infallible. And we had a visiting scholar from Scandinavia who was a very famous scholar who thought, you know, he had these ideas about things and who thought that there weren't mistakes in the New Testament. So I said, okay, you know, so you got with the story of Jairus, you know, like she, she's sick and then she dies and the other one, she's dead ahead of time. So, so I said, which is it? And he said to me, oh, he said, it happened twice. No. First, first, time, <laughs> first time it happened, the girl was sick and then she died. And later, like in a later episode, she died again. And she was, oh my God, are you serious? Oh, man. <laughs> and so I'll give you the third instance I'll give you is one that I just recently I thought was really, really quite good. Uh, a year and a half ago, before right before COVID hit in February of 2020, I was in Chicago at a Christian apologists conference. So as you know, Christian apologists are, uh, are defenders of the faith. They're conservative evangelicals or fundamentalists who think that, you know, that they can defend everything in the faith, that it's all logical, makes sense, and they can argue for it. This conference was on whether uh, the, Bible's have, the Bible's contradictions in it or not, whether the Gospels have contradictions. They had three speakers there who were all very conservative evangelical apologists. Uh, and they had me <laughs> because they wanted to hear another side of the story. And, uh, you know, they wanted to see what they were up against. And so I went, I wasn't sure what was going to happen. I thought, oh, this may not be good, but it was great. I had a great time. They were really nice. They were pleasant. We had, we had jokes. We laughed. And there were a group of students there from Moody Bible Institute where I had gone <laughs> as a out of high school. So I was like, I was a graduate and I was a fundamentalist. And so I said, oh my God, let's have lunch together. They said, yeah, great. So we had lunch and it was great. We told stories. It was a great time. But so we're having this thing and and we I I lay out the argument why, you know, why there are contradictions. And these other guys are saying, yeah, no, they aren't contradictions. And um, Mike Lacona was one of the uh, one of the presenters there, who's a who's a one of the leading apologists today. He's a he's a serious guy, and he's he has a PhD in New Testament studies, and so he's uh, but he's written books defending the Christian faith, including why you have these discrepancies seem to have discrepancies in the Gospels. His view is that you do have these differences in the Gospels, but it's because the Gospel writers are following standard protocols for how you write biographies in the ancient world. So uh, authors like Plutarch, for example, will write a biography and he takes certain licenses and he does things in a certain way because it's just how you do a biography. And so Matthew, Mark, Luke, uh, John, they did, they wrote biographies. So, you know, they're just following the biographers do things. And so in places it looks like you had discrepancies. So and we, we give our talks and Mike does his thing, I do my thing. And afterwards the moderator gets up, who's also a conservative evangelical. And he says, okay, uh, so the four of you, I've got a question. I want you all to answer this. In Matthew's in, in Mark's gospel, Jesus sends out the disciples on his mission during during his ministry uh, to go out and heal the sick and cast out demons. And he says to them, "Don't take a backpack. Don't take extra sandals. Don't take any money. Don't take a staff. You know, just go." <laughs> and so there you go. There you go. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus sent same episode. Jesus sends them out, go heal the sick, raise the dead, or, or, or cast out demons, and uh, you know, don't take a backpack, don't take extra sandals, don't take any extra money, and take a staff. Just the opposite of what Mark says. Mm -hmm. So the moderator says, okay, which did Jesus say? <laughs> <laughs> And I said, well, he probably said neither, because I don't think it's a story. I said, but, but I said, he, you know, Mark's the earlier one. So Mark says, he says, don't take a stab. And I said, he did take a stab. It's, obvious, it's a contradiction. And um, he asked the other two. The other two kind of reconciled. They hemmed and hawed and come figure out some way. Oh, well, maybe it happened twice. You know, so they kind of say, yeah. you got to Lacona. Mike Lacona says, um, well, Mark is right. He said what Mark says, don't take a stab. Okay. And then 
the moderator says, okay, um, to everybody, do you think Matthew's account is inerrant? I said, no. The other two said, yes. And Lacona says, yes, it's inerrant. I said, Mike, you just said that Matthew contradicts Mark. It's <laughs> just the opposite of what Mark says. Mark says, don't take a staff. Matthew says, take a staff. And that's the opposite. So, but now you're saying it's not without, it's not an error. And I said, how, what would it be an error if the contradiction's not an error? He said, well, but Matthew, Matthew meant to change it because he's following the protocols of the writing biographer. So, so he knew what he was doing. So he changed it. He said, look, Mike, it doesn't matter if he meant to do it. Some people mean, mean to lie. But just because they mean to lie doesn't mean it's not a lie. <laughs> if you really make a contradiction, it's still a contradiction. <laughs> yeah, how would, that, how would that work if you walked in the door and your wife at 3 a.m. goes, where were you? Um, I was not at the strip club. Yeah. Or, you know, like, <laughs> oh, no, I was in bed with you. <laughs> I was in bed. What? No, but it's not a contradiction because I know it wasn't right. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. so those are three of my favorites. <laughs> those are the three. Hey, that's legendary. Dr. Bart D. Airman, thank you so much. This has been fun. I hope you enjoyed those three contradictions. And uh, do not forget to go to the webinar December the 5th all day event sign up now in the affiliate link down in the description you'll get a discount if you do trust me that's the way to go and uh look i look forward to seeing you guys for christmas because i can't wait to celebrate the mythological birth of jesus how about you guys we will, we will see some contradictions <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much okay my pleasure thank you